Hello, lads and ladies, and welcome to this, and welcome back for another live stream on the channel. Today, we are here to review Skybet League One from the weekend. Can you see me? Can you hear me? That is always the first thing we say, bar the most important thing, the hello, lads, the hello, ladies. So let me know. Can you hear me nice and clearly uh, down below? A eventful weekend, some shall say. We've got new leaders at the top, an eventful top two. The playoffs changing as ever. We've got new teams in that bottom four as well. And absolute carnage. We had late goals in a lot of games. We had absolute drama. And probably one of the best weeks we've had in Skybet League One so far um, this season as well. We had a lot of goals. And a lot of everything. We do have Jake, who we are going to steal back from our mate, 4-0, uh, written all over it, who, if you didn't know, drew yesterday. But we'll come to them in a bit. Jake will be with us very, very soon. So, um, yeah, I'd probably leave now before we get him in. Uh, we will come to Jake um, in due course. Um, uh, up the Cods. Uh, how are the Ipswich lone players doing in the League One? Uh, they're doing all right. It's you know, especially a few of them, put it that way. Uh, opinions on Vale stop will come to Port Vale later on. But I tell you what, let's bring him in. He's doing some sort of gestures at me. I think he's signaling, signaling that Fleetwood were hard done by yesterday and, you know, we're going to get out of it. But Jake isn't our only guest today, which we will come to in a minute now. We're just going to add him to the stage. Jake, <laughs> how are we doing, mate? A bit tired. I'm knackered, mate. I think I'm on the right, I'm on the right webcam. I'm knackered. Yeah, I, it's going to be a long night, mate, isn't it? Absolutely. How are you, Ben? I'm very good. I, I wish football didn't exist. Let us know in the comment section below how your team did this weekend. So uh, the order of the show today is a little bit different. It's very much the same because I, I am, you know, as they come, I like things done in a particular order. Uh, we will go through every game in Skybet League One. We had 12 belting games yesterday. Um, you know, there's some absolute stormers in there as well, going uh, going through them. And But we're going to do Fleetwood last because we are going to bring in our mate, Jack Ward, of the football podcast, who did actually manage to come on yesterday at Highbury. Tyler Goodrum uh, coming back, and I thought he was injured, but no, he makes an appearance as Oxford run out the winners. It'll be an hour show. We'll have about 10 minutes at the end. So um, some games will be done quicker than others. Uh, there's some highlight games like Derby against Portsmouth is highlighted as one of the key games of the weekend, as is Reading against Bolton. Some belters going on there as well. Tennis balls galore. Jake, how was your weekend, mate, just quickly? Good, mate. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, Luke Plange is good at football, isn't he? Uh, crikey. I just couldn't... So, right, we'll just, we'll just talk about that. Um, if anyone that doesn't know that watches this channel, Luke Plange has now played. That was his 27th game in Skybet League One. He scored one on loan at Derby, but in League One, he's played 27 games in League One. I think he played eight ta 18 times last season or 19 times for Lincoln last season, didn't score. I think it was his eighth or ninth game yesterday um, in a Carlisle shirt, eighth game yesterday, and he's finally scored his first goal. And, and you know something? I, I, I was checking the scores, but I don't, I'm not, on a Saturday night, I don't do much detail, really. I just look at the scores, go over it once or twice. And I didn't actually look at the Lincoln game because I thought, one all, I'll, you know, I didn't really message you. And I, and I thought, well, who scored for Carla? And Luke Plunge scored when I was doing my notes. I was absolutely howling. So yeah, um, there you are. Now then, Treacles, uh, Lee Johnson, the same Hibs manager. Um, as, we'll come to him in a bit. As a Vale fan, I'm enjoying the moment. We have so much quality and long, mate. Continue. Um, scenes at Pride Park, loud and clear, nappers. That's what you want. So get liking, get subscribing as we'll come to the first game, Jake. Barnsley Burton, good result for Barnsley. In all competitions now, with the cut win, they've won the last four by two goals to nil. But in League One, they've won the last three by two goals to nil. A good win away at Wigan in there as well. They won away at Cheltenham in there as well. And again, beating Burton. These are sides you'd expect to beat. Maybe not Wigan, maybe get a point. They go down to 10 men. Wigan, Charlie Hughes getting sent off um, as they're running through on goal. That changes the, 
the, the picture of the game. But it's a really, really good victory, in my opinion, for Barnes. So you who Devante Cole, I know you've just been talking about on Tom's show, you know, very well. Eight goals in seven. I think he only got 15 last season. So he is the division's top goal scorer. Um, again, they only had a got a, a, an expected goals of 0.78 compared to Burton's 0.68. But it's a big win because their next three games are huge. They've got Portsmouth at home on Tuesday night. Northampton away, which is a tricky tie. Northampton have only lost the four games and all by that one goal scoreline. And then they've got Blackpool coming to Oakwell. So some tricky ties. But Barnsley keeping clean sheets, their fourth victory. And in every single one of them, they've kept a clean sheet. Yeah, they were good yesterday as well, Barnsley, I thought. Burton didn't really have much of a sniff at all. Um, Devante Cole, like you said, and I've just been talking to to, to our mate Fornell about um, someone that they need to look out for on Tuesday. Two really good finishes, I thought. And, you know, to say he's already got eight goals and what with the, the middle of September, that's a cracking return for a, a centre-forward because he's halfway to where you want him to be. So, yeah, Barnsley, fantastic. Again, I, I think Neil Collins got a lot of stick. And you know what? I was probably someone that gave him enough stick uh, when he first took the job, obviously coming from Tampa Bay in America. Um, but he seems to be really shutting everybody up at the minute. Three wins on the bounce. And you know what? You'd back them in, in, in the games at Oakwell at the minute, wouldn't you? You wouldn't say they're going to drop many points no. there. So, for me, Barnsley, great. Burton, I mean, we say it about all the teams that go to the top teams, Ben, but... Burton's season isn't judged on going to Barnsley away. That Burton's season this year is going to be judged on going to Lincoln away or Fleetwood away, or or maybe not Fleetwood, but some of the you know some teams that are going to be above the the dotted line. So um, it's going to be interesting for for Burton, but but a great performance of Barnsley. Next week, Burton do play Fleetwood, so it's funny you should say that. A quick question on Burton because I kind of feel feel like they're obviously there's no Cole Stockton. They sign really well and the squad seems really poor. Like you know they've got kind of mashed together Helm, Labala, you know barely Labala is a decent player. Blackpool mm-hmm. signed him with a lot of promise, but unfortunately it just never worked out. He had a loan spell at Colchester last year, but again the bat line, you know Moon, Hughes, Hamer. Um, Again, Sheba in midfield, Powell in midfield. It's a good team. Now, after seven games last year, you know, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank got the boot, obviously, on Sky today. And it made me think, is Dina Mamre under, under any bit of pressure, do you think, now? Because in those seven games, bear in mind, they've gone to Blackpool, they've had Derby at home, they've been to Barnsley, been to Shrewsbury. Mm. I think they've had Port Vale in that run. I think, oh, they've got Port Vale um, coming up. Um, mm. it's, it, it's a tough run, but... Bolton at home as well. Do you think he's in any sort of trouble? Because the the next games are they yeah, have got Port Vale on Tuesday. Sorry, mm. they've got Fleetwood on Saturday. Mm. Then they've got Reading away. If he's not in trouble now, then in a he week's time, be. yeah. Do you think in a week's time he could be the next managerial casualty? Uh, he 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 could be the next one. Um, do you know? I think the problem with Dino is he sort of raised expectation by the players that he brought in over the summer. And when you bring in, what did they did they bring in something like 11, 12 new faces into the building? They let a couple of go, didn't they? Uh, a couple of knees went back. Um, it's really difficult to get a team to gel. And you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, teams like Oxford have done it or teams like Pompey have done it. The greatest of respect, the players that Burton bring in and the players that Pompey and Oxford are bringing in are, are a whole different kettle of fish, really, aren't they? So for me, um, it, it, he's raised expectation. I've seen people sort of, I, mean, I know this is only on TikTok and things, but rating League One transfers, you know, teams this year. Burton are always up there. But, you know, I don't know if you know Callum Fowler, uh, Ben, the Barnsley yes, fan. Good lad. He put Burton third or fourth in their um, in their uh, in, in the transfer window. So I, I, I think he's raised expectation, but I, I think this Burton team will come good and will finish higher than where they have. I think they need to stick with Dino. But, you know, if he doesn't, if he gets beat in the next three, you're thinking, Crikey on a bikey there in Bogger. Yeah. I agree. And keep your comments coming, guys. We will come to them. Keep liking, keep subscribing. Derby, Portsmouth, big crowd. 3,000 travelled um, yeah. from the South Coast and were loud as ever. I actually watched, you know, 15 minutes worth of highlights and they were all I could hear Portsmouth fans. An absolute credit to, to their football club and absolutely remarkable. And it doesn't surprise me anymore. Um, and in my opinion, Portsmouth with a better side by by a one. They had five shots to Derby's one. That was a penalty. And um, bear in mind as well, we also said 
Derby have had two shots on target in big games. Away at Bolton, lost that by two goals to one. And at home to Portsmouth, they have had two shots on target, both being penalties. That, for a club like Derby County, is pathetic, not good enough. And if you want to get out of the league, you need to create chances and score lots of goals, create, you know, make chances and kind of put Portsmouth on the pedestal because Portsmouth are the away side. They're in good form. You know, they're unbeaten, the only team unbeaten in, in League One this year. Obviously, they've only got the 38 games, 30, what, 39 games to go unbeat, unbeatable. And then I'll never be able to get Dylan off my back ever again. <laughs> um, but it's the magic man, Colby Bishop. He pops up. And how many times this season have Portsmouth looked like losing a game of football, but they haven't? They've drawn or they've won. They've found a way. Mm. Oh, I think the opening day at Bristol Rose was, was important. These last-minute goals that go against you, these last-minute key decisions, I'll come to, onto it in Fleetwood in a minute because I am positive that Fleetwood will get out of the bottom four at this moment in time because it's just key margins in these games. Bishop, again, a flick on. It's a poacher's finish. Bishop has got four goals in seven, 24 goals in 53 League One games for Portland Football Club, and it's just exactly what we needed. Swanson was absolutely fantastic. I didn't need to see, I saw Tom's vlog and he, he was raving him at Tottenham Hotspur away performance. And they were the better side by and on. And they really looked like a good side. Three wins, four draws. If they can carry on that win one, draw one mentality, which you've done in fairness, um, Jay, you've only you know, the mm. point behind. I think they're going to be in for a really, really special season. Yeah, and I've just had an hour talking about this game, so I should be pretty cleared up on it, shouldn't I? For really? once, for once in your uh, life. Yeah, we don't ever get to talk about Portsmouth, do we, that much, Ben? Um, that's a joke. Uh, yeah, do you know what? I thought Pompey were really good. Uh, Derby had opportunities, then. I think it would be unfair to say that Derby didn't. They had one that went over the bar um, where they probably should have scored. Um, but just because they don't get them on target, and I, I understand it's a fair metric, but... They did have quite a number of shots that, that didn't really challenge the keeper. And they did have shooting opportunities. Um, but Pompey were great. Um, like you said, I think they were excellent. They had no Morel, no Sadie. Um, and they brought in Robertson. Paddy Lane started. And Gavin White was in the 10 and played really well. Um, and the, the, the both the goals, Ben, realistically, you're looking at the penalty decisions. And if you've watched Tom's video, you'll know what I mean. Um, Pompey first... first the first opportunity, Derby should should have had a penalty. He didn't get it given. Regan Paul handles the ball. Second one, I don't think is a penalty, and then she gives it. Rebecca Welsh does do that quite often. I think she, at, go sorry on, to interrupt. She was the best ref. We've had her twice in the last two seasons. Carl Alloway in the JPT last season, right? Mm -hmm. And Doncaster away the season before. We we drew both. Carl Alloway was on pens in the cup. But I'm not just saying this because we didn't lose the game. She didn't really make any decisions for, for Fleet within those games. She was the best referee we had in, in both That's of those games. A lot that, a lot gets said about a female referee. She was by far the best referee we have had at Fleet. That, with That's of interesting. Because yeah, we had her away at Posh last year and I thought she was awful. But um, I'm sure she's a great referee. I know she's all I'm going to get is she's not going to... This year, Ben, she's not going to do it. But I'm not saying it because of that. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big admirer of her game too as well. And yeah, I, I mean, it's good yes. to see. Absolutely, Ben. But it's not actually her fault. The Pompey goal's offside. Colby Bishop's offside from Terry Devon's flick. Um, so it shouldn't count. But you know what? Good for Pompey. Did you know uh, a certain Mr Bishop is a Forest fan as well? So he, he uh, going back to Pride Party, did, did you not see him do the old uh, yeah. Robin Hood thing? It's um, Bullseye. Well, Robin Hood's not even from Nottingham. But we won't get into that. I just got into that with Tom. But... Um, yeah, good for, for Bishop to go and score. Hopefully he has an off day next week or else we might be in bother. But Pompey, a really good side. Um, and I'm very looking forward to, to going down to Fratton next week. I actually can't wait. He's changing his tune, guys. A week before the game, he's getting a bit nervous. He's getting a bit twitchy. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Two I'm weeks fine. ago, you, you oh. No, Rico you Hackett, mate. You, you wait till we get on to Lincoln. Rico Hackett. Rico Hackett. Not worried. Right. We better fly through these games now. Exeter against Cheltenham. What a result for Exeter. I don't yeah. care where Cheltenham are on the table. Exeter are top of 
the League One table. Finished for 14th last season. What an unbelievable turnaround. Started well last year and they are being hard to beat, hard to resolute. And it almost feels that late in Orient defeat didn't happen because no one spoke about it. There was two games last week. Um, Exeter lost to late in Orient at the bank and Stevenage drew to Carlisle. And again, without those late goals for Stevenage, which we'll come to in the last two weeks, Stevenage will be on 19 points right now out of a possible 24, but they sit on 15. But we're on about Exeter, another clean sheet, another victory. And, you know, only the four goals conceded. They've scored 10. It was Caleb Watts who scored three and 30 for Morecambe last year. And it's good to see him doing well again. That Cheltenham team, though, is very, very weak. A week. Malcolm Street and Ferry as a midfield, as a front three. Williams mm. on that far side. There's just no real creativity. And his time running out for Wade Elliott. I think the next four games, Peterborough, Stevenage, Lincoln and Fleetwood all come. I don't know why you included Fleetwood in there, Ben, because that's a walkover for Cheltenham. Uh, <laughs> you know but, something, uh, right? Right. He says a lot, right, when they're not bottom of the league <laughs> and they've not scored a goal and they are not... On the, but I, I've come to... The, last I've come night, to Fleetwood. Right? you come I've to come Fleetwood. To Fleetwood. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wrap these night, games I, up. In, yeah, I'll, I'll see it when I come, but... We'll, I was in we'll the wrap these games up in 15 minutes, Ben, and then you can have half an hour. But, yeah... No, I thought Exeter actually made some really good signings in the week, actually. They brought in Caleb Watts, who's been at Morecambe, I believe, and then Yannick Wiltshire as well. Caleb Watts was at Morecambe, wasn't he? I just, I just said that. Oh, I didn't listen to you. That's probably why. Um, but yeah, no. Um, and then and then Yannick Wiltshire coming, obviously, from, from Oxford and been at Norwich and, and Wigan and stuff. So, yeah, they were good, weren't they, Exeter? I mean, they, they made it a bit more difficult than they probably would have liked, but a great win and... And but the most important thing about Frexter was keeping the momentum going, and, and and yes, they got beat on on Saturday at home to Orient, but keeping the momentum going, staying top of the league, and um, just going to SJP is going to be a bloody nightmare for everyone. We've got to go there at the end of next month, which I'm really looking forward to. But um, they're a great side; they've got great options. I don't know if you've seen it, Ben. Dimitri Mitchell on Twitter has been absolutely yeah. what like how making me howl this week. So very good. Uh, props very, very to him. Good. But but for Cheltenham, I mean. I know you know him, Ben, John Palmer. You were on with him with uh, Gab Sutton's um, EFL debate the other week. Um, I think he's done a piece this week on saying why it's time that Wade Elliott and Cheltenham part ways. And I'm starting to think that if, if the reporter of the club is saying it, I'm starting to think there's, that there's truth to the rumour. So we could be seeing Wade Elliott losing his job, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Well, not hopefully, but in a couple of weeks. Well, we'll come to Fleetwood in a bit because we have got Jack Ward coming on. So we'll fly Oops. through these next few. <laughs> Just quickly, Jake, I'm not going to make any more loop plans jokes because we'll come yeah. to Lincoln next. Yeah. I, I felt very much felt when I looked at this game and kind of watched parts of it, looked at the statistics. It was Lincoln City of 12 months ago again, just creeping mm. in where a newly promoted side has come to your stadium and come away with a one-all draw. I think Exeter did it last year. Forest Green Row we certainly did it last yep. season. I think why, how many games you drew at home last year? And all by one, Fleetwood came and drew two all. Similar standard to that, let's be honest. Mm. It kind of felt like Wardy sold you. I've told you. They're not great, Carlisle, but they're a pain to play against. And that is the biggest issue, in my opinion. So... What did you find about the game? What did you find out about Lincoln? Obviously, you've got a few injuries now. Uh, I think mm. Tyler Walker and Ben House are yeah. out there. Ben and House Jack Vale. And Jack, Jack Vale. No strikers. Yeah. Obviously, that was the deadline day, day signing. Yeah. You signed him instead of Jack Ayerdale, apparently. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, good one, Ben. Um, I, do you know what? I actually thought Carlisle played really well first half. They actually didn't look like a newly promoted side at all. Pinging the ball around. Gibson was fantastic. Owen yeah. Moxon, great. Um, Sean Maguire looked fantastic. Looked every inch a championship player, obviously. Played there most of his career. Um, they were really well, really good side, pinging the ball around. They were fantastic, like I said. Deserved to go one nil up, I thought. Um, whether it's Luke Plange's goal or whether it isn't will we'll, we'll be, uh, we'll be decided. Um, but... Yeah, and then second half, I mean, I mean, we had no Danny Mandroyo as well as no strikers, which mm. is pretty much buggering us up because he's been our best player this year. But second half, we get the goal pretty early. Ethan Hamilton, I don't know if you've seen it, Ben, but it's an absolute wonder strike. Ethan yeah. Hamilton's a great player. Um, 
Oh, and you know what? Uh, I, I wasn't expecting to say this six weeks ago. Hakeem Adelican, obviously frozen out from under Michael Appleton at Carlisle during a Papa John's game where um, he left the field of play to get a drink of water and Carlisle scored an equaliser. Um, came back, made his redemption at, 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 against Carlisle and played really well up front with Rico Hackett. We, we didn't. We probably should have won the game. If we had Mandroy, if we had a striker, we would have won the game. Yeah, absolutely. But we didn't. Uh, I'm not frustrated. We broke down Carlisle multiple times in that second half. We had plenty of opportunities. I don't think... I, I, I was to get your point in saying it is 1-1 against the newly promoted side at home. We carved them open at times yesterday. So I, I think it's slightly different. We were we were fantastic, I thought, in the second half. So if we can, cut, if we can actually have a striker on the pitch... We might be all right, but we can't do for eight weeks. Brilliant. We need we need to get read to the read to the wine, get scoring. Re to the this. read. Yeah. There Absolutely. we are. Absolutely. Anyway, Peterborough United next. Clark Harris did start up front. There was question marks asked over that. The first thing I did when I researched Posh was had he played? Um obviously he did have a shot on target. Other than that, limited in what he did in the game. Kipriani again, another goal, three goals in seven, as many in his previous 48 games for the Posh. So just starting to show that he is starting to score some goals. Um, again, bar that Pete was starting to struggle. Um, again, 10 points from seven, three defeats and a draw from their last four games after a perfect start. Three out of three defeats um, to Oxford in there as well. And, um, you know, after a good win away at Barnsley, he, he, he's been... You know, it's been struggling, sorry. Um, and what and Leighton Orient also a good point as well on the road for them. They are picking up results now, aren't they, Leighton Orient? Um, obviously a great result last week. And when you think Leighton Orient are done, you they kind of come back at you and a point away at Blackpool was only what three weeks ago as well. Mm. Decent couple of weeks to them and kind of got them out of any bit of danger they were in temporarily early on this season. Yeah, or in a, 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 a trick it along nicely. They needed to back up that win on the road away at Exeter, and they did against Peterborough. I think Peterborough are a good side. Um, you know, you certainly you look at the lineup that, that, that Posh fielded for that game uh, Clark Harris, Mason Clark, Poku, Kiprianu, Collins, all experienced players. And then you, know, you look at the Orient team, not many of them have played League One recently, have they, apart from you looking at Piggott, really, and uh, Jordan Graham, perhaps. So, Really good point, I thought, for, for, for Leighton Orient. Um, Posh need to do better at home. If Posh are going to be up in the playoffs like people think they are, then sides like Leighton Orient at home, teams like Port Vale, teams like Leighton Orient, you're going to have to beat them. But Orient, great, great point. Two shots on target. It's a proper housery performance away from home, I thought, from Orient. So, well done to them. Absolutely agree with you there. Um, we'll go to Port Vale next, who I'm not going to say this, about the result on the opening day of the season because I've basically been out of Port Vale's Twitter. You don't need to, mate. They're that I good. Think, you don't I, need I, to. I kind of think, you look at their squad, right, yesterday, and you kind of think, well, it's a very tidy League One squad. Ripley... I'm not just saying this because they're on a good run. Jake can back me up. Anyone who's watched this channel for, an, for at least 18 months now can back me up as how much I really like Connor Ripley. I last year I kept saying he's found a home at Morecambe. Connor Ripley, all he needs is a home. Fans that love him, a manager that trusts him, will play him every week, and he's a good goalkeeper. He will make mistakes. He will He will do this because you know he's a League One goalkeeper. That's why he's in League One for a reason. He's a good goalkeeper. All blaster, like a Vitti, I really like it. Oh, Chisler has been fantastic. Wilson has had a revival. Remember, he was on trial at Fleetwood eight weeks ago. Wasn't wanted by Port Bear, was released. Went back on trial, went to their pre-season, impressed, signed the deal. And again, it was Ben Garrity with the goal. Two goals in seven, the former Blackpool and older man getting that one. Brilliant result. Five wins in six and a point away at Bloomfield Road. Really, really impressive. They beat Northampton, who were resolute, hard to break down. And that's what Northampton are. They've got legs, they've got hearts, they've got minds. Under John Brady, it's really good to see. It's the same old 4 3 3 Hoskin, the Pier, uh, Bowie, Sowerby, Leonard in that midfield two, uh, midfield three as well. Um, I really like Northampton, but I really like Port Vale. And they're in the top two, joint top of the league. So what is it, 16 points now? What a, what a football club. And those fans, when things go right, are unbelievable. When they don't go right, they'll soon tell you. And when it's going right, those, those, those players are heroes right now at, at Vale Park. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't allude to the fact that I put them bottom in my uh, pre-season predictions. So thank you, Ben, for sparing me the blushes. But um, 
complete dominance from Vale yesterday, really. 13 shots to, to, to Northampton's five. Northampton only got one shot on target, which tells you everything. Um, they were made to work for a little bit. They have the, a lot of the ball. They completely nearly double the passes. Um, but again, they, they just show there's a will, there's a way. And unfortunately for them, Ben Garrity um, is known from scoring goals in midfield. So great for him, great for Port Vale to keep the run going and, and to, to move on to 16 points. You think about it, Ben, they're nearly halfway to safety um, yeah. uh, already. So Port Vale, I'm sure they'll be happy with that. And um, everyone who, who, who talks about the opening day defeat to Barnes clearly doesn't know a lot about football because Port Vale have moved on from there. And I think that's why they've done so well. They've got it out of the mindset. They've gone, well, you know what? We can either sit and sulk or we can actually go and have a go at it. And you know what? Fair play to them. They've had a go and they've beat some top sides this year. And if they want to have ambitions of getting into the top six, then beating Northampton at home is exactly what you should be doing. The, the best thing that's happened to their football club this year, I think, is losing 7-0. I kind of think it kind of mm. reset them, kind of put them in shock. They weren't even bad on the 7-0. I mean, Barnsley were just clinical. A bit like Paul's were away at Orion. Put mm. Orion... Paul's had four shots on target, scored three, and there was a known goal. So they had 75% of the goals, shots went in. It was mm. a bit like that. And you have days like that where you just come across that. And Port Vale, I think, if they would have won that or drawn that or lost that 1-0, I don't think they might have taken 16 points. They might, they, I still think they would have taken over 10. But I think that has kind of shored them up defensively. And they've got goals as well. I, re, I like a number of their players as well. I'm doing a video of my favourite player from every league one club coming soon. And... There's about seven or eight I could pick from. They're so likeable, and I shouldn't like him, but I do. And you know, and it's a tough place to go, Port Vale. It's one of those places where I'm going there. I think start of November, something like that, and I'm kind of going. I don't want to go. I don't want to because it's a tough place, Port Vale. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be nasty, and that's exactly what you need. Now, another team that are being very resolute at the moment and being, you know, going a lot of going against them is Reading. And when you look at it, you know, they're on five points, already deducted a point. They won two home games out of three going into this game. And their owners, obviously not paying the players on time. More issues going on there. Ruben Sellers coming out this week saying it's unfair to deduct them points. It's unfair on the fans, the players um, that have worked so hard for those points. But he can't think of another way to other than a fine, which means absolutely nothing, um, you know, to, to punish them. And unfortunately, they got three points deducted, but what a way to go back and get those three points. If I'm honest with you, Jake, if they do not have those three points deducted, would they won that game of football? I don't know. I think it kind of gave them that extra extra 10% in, in the gears as well. And they've won three out of four at home. They've beaten Stephen, who were a very good side, and beaten Cheltenham, who were... Not a very good side. And now they're beating Bolton, who are an exceptional side. And um, Dion Charles, again, five and six for him. Um, again, scores a lot of goals, 21 in 48 at League One games. Kind of that Colby Bishop standard as well. I think Colby mm -hmm. Bishop's slightly better, in my opinion. But that, that stream's not for this. Um, I, I'm already hated by Bolton fans enough, I think. Uh, but Reading, superb. Yeah. That's getting to be mentioned in there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, Reading were good. 18 shots at home against Bolton. You know, when we spoke about Bolton towards the start of the season, Ben, we were thinking of they were going to be untouchable. We, I went there and they played us off the park. You went there, they, they, they hit you for, for three as well and they were scoring goals for fun. For a side to get 18 shots off against Bolton is pretty impressive to say how good they are. And, you know, I, I agree with you. I think that the aggrievement of the, the points deduction would have been fresh in the, 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 the players' minds and... Fair play to them because they're under, you know, everything's against Reading at the moment, similar to to uh, Wigan, when Wigan had their points deduction. And, and they've come through it really well, haven't they? Um, Vickers scoring in the 86th minute. I, I know Bolton were down to 10 men right at the end, but to me, it doesn't make much of a difference. But Reading to win at home against Bolton, it, it sort of shows you if what this group is capable of away from all the, the, the drama off the pitch. So... Um, I think if Reading are to stay up comfortably this year, which I think they probably will, not trouble the top six, I think this sort of result gives their fans plenty of hope for the future. Um, and the message to die, you need to sell up, mate. You need to get out of Reading because you do not know what you're doing. You are out of your depth. Sell up, let them fans have their football club back and let them have some happy days because uh, Reading are a group of fans that I really love. I've got some mates who are Reading fans and they absolutely adore their football club. Yeah, you're going to go, oh, friends, aren't you, Ben? Um, ah, I, was about, I, was about, I was about to say, I wonder why you've got no money. Paying all these people, they are not friends. <laughs> it's 
Well, I'll pay you, Ben. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, Reading. Reading. It, it gives them hope for the future. If they can compete against a side like Bolton now, think about what they can do in twelve months under a new ownership. So, for me, I, I think Reading should be good. Yep, agree with you there. Um, again, we'll come to Shrewsbury now very quickly. Shrewsbury, things are going a little bit sour there. And the only mm-hmm. one for, against Fleet were three weeks ago. It was a great result for them, really. And they were nine points from 15 and looking comfortable. And still Shrewsbury, nine points from a possible, what, 21 a- a- available, I still think is a, mm-hmm. a decent return for someone like Shrewsbury. I think they're not overachieving, they're not underachieving, let's be honest about that. Losing at Carlisle was the big one. I kind of think the expected goals is is the issue there. It's always been low. Mm-hmm. And when they went 1-0 up against Fleetwood and we had the man sent off, they were terrible. They didn't really create anything. We didn't create anything. They were resolute defensively. But when you've got Adoa and Max Matter, who did start his first game yesterday for the football club, came off the bench at Fleetwood and um, at Carlisle for you know 20, 25 minutes or so, got a, a decent you know number of minutes in his you say Daniel Udo still needs to get back to his, you know, fighting bears. Winchester Perry uh, in that midfield, midfield three. Feeney Dunkley and Anderson at the back is a, a Morosi is their back three and the back four that we all know. But I still worry about them go, you know, going forwards. And I kind of think, well, will Matty Taylor last? Because he's already come out and said some questionable things in the media, especially yesterday. Um, but Bristol Rovers were excellent yesterday, and the big, I think, the best thing that happened to them yesterday was Collins getting a goal. I think kind of him not scoring this season, the weight went on. Bear in mind, this guy got 27 goal contributions last season, 16 goals, 11 assists. Most of them did come in the first half of last season, bear in mind. So he's finally got his first goal. He got an assist as well um, on the score sheet and Cox getting his first clean sheet of the season. 23 out of the 24 teams have kept the Sky Vet League One clean sheet. The only one team that's not done that is yours truly. <laughs> so uh, there you are, Bristol Rovers. Good result for them on the road. And uh, Bristol Rovers, decent start. Two wins, three defeats, and two, uh, and uh, sorry, and a defeat. So not too bad. Uh, two defeats, sorry. Are you all right, Ben? Two, two, not one, two, two. two, two yeah. One, two, one, two. Uh, yeah. Asking one, two. Yeah, Bristol Rovers are good, mate. Um, obviously, it's a. a they probably were given a bit of a helping hand by Shrewsbury yesterday. They were that poor. Um, but Shrewsbury have been pretty poor in recent weeks. I can't think in the last month that we've done these, Ben, how many times have we sat here and gone, do you know what? Shrewsbury played well this week. I don't think we've said that once, have we? Bristol Rovers, on the other hand, have, have played well in moments and just haven't had the 90-minute performance. Yes, rest in peace, Colin Murphy, by the way. Um, really, really big part of, of Lincoln history. Um, but yeah, really, really big good performance for, for Rovers away from home. They needed to get Collins on the score sheet. He, he tapped it in, didn't he? And then, you know, they're, they're, they're a good side, Bristol Rovers. He just needed a bit to get going. They still need a striker. They need a striker. I think they need to start delving into the free agent market just for on, a, on a short-term basis. There's still some really good names available. Um, I, know, I know I've been thinking that because we, we've not got a striker at the minute, but Connor Wickham still doesn't have a football club. Connor Wickham goes to Bristol Rovers. He does a really good job there and scores five goals between now and Christmas. So it's going to be really good, mate, if Bristol Rovers can just get that strike over the line. But good for them to get off the mark with a, a, an away win, that's for sure. Well, look at what Connor Wickham did last year, went in at Forest Green, did well. Yeah. And got I mean, yeah. with Cardiff in the end as well. And yeah. obviously, uh, I'll be having a look. I think Fleetwood need a left back. We don't have a left back at the football club. And we don't have, we, our back four, we'll come to Fleetwood in a minute, but we didn't have a back four yesterday. Our back four was none of our back four normally. So I'm getting the excuses in. Stevenage. Now, I can't stop looking at their scores just because of Matt Farley. Now, what a guy. <laughs> what a guy, right? I'll be honest with you. I didn't know him from Adam two months ago, right? And as soon as he went up, I messaged you, didn't I? I went, who's what follow, right? Anyone good? What do they like? And he went, you follow Matt Farley. I went, what's that? He goes, find out for yourself. And honestly, I went, this guy is a nutter. Like, he's so positive, so enthusiastic, and I love that about him. So, shout out to Matt. And um, again, we'll, we'll hopefully be seeing you very, very soon for the Stevenage uh, against Fleetwood game. Um, again, he has asked me a question, which we will come back to in the Q&A part mm-hmm. um, at the end as well. Uh, Stevenage have only lost the one game in eight. So, that is a, you know, a remarkable, remarkable achievement. But I think the one thing they'll find frustrating is two and up against Carlisle last week. 1-0 up against Charlton this week. Scored 90 minutes Joe Garner last week. Mm-hmm. Again, they only had two shots on target. Carl Hell as well. Um, and again, the Charlton were poor 
find a way to get an equaliser. It is it is it is frustrating, but still 15 points from eight Sky Bet League one game, just under two points a game. Reed scoring his fifth goal in eight. Bear in mind, he only scored 10 goals in 45 in League One, League Two last season, sorry. Really, really impressed by them. They're hard to break down, horrible to play against, and they're just a bundle of joy. They've got a very good squad in. Um, Steve Evans, you know, men keep going. He's not going to Hibs. He's at staying at Stevenage. And why why move? Because you're not under any pressure. Stevenage will back you till the hilt till the end of the season, even if you're on a five or a ten game bad run. And you know, you like there, you like them, you're comfortable. It just mm. seems a really, really I'm gonna say for the first time for Steve Evans, it's a good fit. Mm. Big goal, Reedy. What a player. What a great player he's been for, for Stevenage. I think that's his 22nd uh, EFL goal for Stevenage, which puts him fifth in their uh, their rankings this year. Thank you, Farley, for that stat that I got off you earlier. Um, yeah, do you know what? Borough are, are really acclimatised to the level. And if you listen to the excellent Stevenage Borough uh, Football Club podcast that, that Mr Farley does, he, he said it all season, to be fair to him. They've recruited top end League One players, and to know what it's hard to argue with them. At the, you know where we sit now, isn't it? Thompson, Thompson, Thompson. No, no, no more Thompsons. Um, but they've done really well. Presley's coming. The press, as he calls him, been fantastic. Right. He absolutely loves it. Um, but yeah, they've been excellent. They've they've really adapted. Do you know what, Charlton? The no mugs. You look at the players they brought in over the summer, and they've they've got. I say this to a gritted teeth, a very good manager at this level. I know what I know what he can do. And if he can do what he did with us for Charlton, they'll be absolutely they'll be absolutely fine. Um but to go to to, to break Charlton down and keep him out and, and then only concede a penalty in the last minute, it's a good performance. And I think Stevenage will have taken the point before Saturday, definitely. So good point for Stevenage. They keep marching on. I've seen that Farley's uploaded a podcast, so I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to, to an hour of positivity on my on my way to work tomorrow. But do you know what? I'm going to say it. Up the borough. Go on. I, I think I need a bit of positivity in my life. I was on the radio yesterday, nice and positive. After the game, they rang me back up. Hello? Yeah? Is that you? Yeah? Can you speak to us? Yeah? Nothing else? Nope. One word <laughs> answers. That was it. What's up? Oh, I'm drained. I'm not enough. We'll come to Fleetwood very soon. Uh, we're going on to Wigan now against Cambridge. Very, very interesting this week. Cambridge want to change badge. A few a few banners in that Cambridge away end of don't change our badge. Mm. I, I just kind of think, what's why bro- if it's not broken, why change it personally? Um, it's not, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's the phrase. Well, exactly. I'm not a what man for English, mate. You know, my team's bottom at league. Damn I'm humble. not. Yeah. So, right. Well, fleet with it a bit, please. Um, but Wigan again, brilliant, really, really good. And only an XG of 0.63, but again, found a way to beat Derby County, found a way to beat Northampton, found a way to beat Bolton, and now found a way to beat Cambridge and a point in there away at Brunton Park. 13 points uh, they would have, they're on five points now. And again, a tricky couple of last few games. Remember at Barnsley, they were down to 10. And Blackpool, the equalised in the 89th, conceded in the 93rd to, to, to King Kenny Dougal, as Blackpool fans call him. Humphreys, again, uh, another goal for, for his name as well. So everything's going well at Wigan. Good to see. Cambridge, again, just slowly, slowly slowing down a bit there after a really good start. But they have beaten Reading, Reading just recently as well. Um, again, there have been no goals in the last kind of five matches as well. So that's a problem in my eyes. But for that... A decent few weeks as well. They've got Port Vale, Derby, um, you know, all coming up as well. So it's going to be um, interesting to see how, how they do there. Yeah, we're going to are all right, mate, aren't they? You, you absolutely love them to bits, don't you? You love Wigan. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. I'll um, I'll send you five I, in the post. I do not love Wigan. Well, I like Wigan. I like every. I treat every team in Skybet League One the utmost with respect and the same. You know that, Jake. I'm a, Try to be as honest as I can. And I'll tell you what, I'd love it if we beat Burton next week. Love it. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to are doing all right at the moment. Um, they, they seem to, they started the season in, in absolutely hot form, didn't they? Um, and then ever since they got to positive points, they've sort of, they've not, they've not struggled. I would say struggled's a bit unfair. The, the, the momentum has slowed down a little bit at Wigan. Um, and you know what? Uh, I, I think 
getting back on track with a win against Cambridge at home. Let's let's be honest, Ben. Cambridge are a good side. Cambridge are beating some good sides this year. They're beating Oxford. Don't know if Wally's in the in the green room yet, but um, is he? He's not in the green room yet. Oh, waiting not. for him. Waiting for his he's appearance. Not. Okay, let me know when he is, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll tell him the game. Oxford are coming. Up. We've still got one more game before we go. Um, to Oxford. And then and then yeah, like I said, Cambridge are no mug. So to, for, to Wigan to, to turn them over is a a, a great result um, for Cambridge. Well, it's all about the badge, really, this week, isn't it? And it's absolutely hideous. Keep the badge the same. I think some could say the, the badge won't... They, they won't be getting the badge in at Cambridge this week, will they? Oh, hey, get it in, get it in. Uh, anyway, last but not least, Wickham, again, Wickham are back, baby. Can I just say that, by the way? I just think... Wickham, we're, at the end of last season, we're having more possession than teams, passing teams off the park. I'm like, hang on, this isn't working. <laughs> and at one stage, they won four from 17 under Matt Bloomfield. Mm. And it was a worry for me. Yesterday, they had 35% of possession. Four shots on target, won the game. Away in Northampton, they had 30, 30-odd percent possession, had one shot on target, which was a scramble with Richard Keogh. I know Ward is in the chat. That's how you say it, mate. That's, you know, um, <laughs> he's, giving me, he's giving me a thumbs up back uh, for anyone um, that can't see him just yet. Obviously, you can't. Oh, is Wardy um, here? Is Wardy he, here? He is here? He's here. We'll speak to him. Yeah, yeah Cambridge beat you. Hey. Uh, anyway, uh, three clean sheets in that run. They've won four out of, four out of five. The only point coming away. Um, again, if I'm coming at home, sorry, against um, Burton, Sam Vokes back with a goal as well, which is huge for him. Brandon Hanlon back with a goal, 13 goals for Wickham in 87 games for him. And McCleary getting assists, all that front three getting involved as well. Blackpool over 400 passes. Um, again, an XG of just over one, uh, of just over one. Rhodes and Beasley not really causing any trouble. We are Morgan and Norburn in midfield three. It's a good midfield three when you're winning games of football like Portsmouth. There's no creativity when CJ Hamilton's not playing well. Blackpool don't play well. He was excellent against Wigan. Blackpool played well. CJ Hamilton is a good player. Plays a good game. One in five. One in six. That's his issue. Um, they're going to be resolute Blackpool, but they're going to have to be a lot, lot better. They're a team I think will get better as the season goes on. But, but I think the credit must go to Wickham on this hard-fought victory. Yeah, and the thing with Blackpool is that I, I just think that that front unit need to play together a little bit more. Um, that they, they, they've been chopping and changing. Obviously, Jordan Rhodes coming to the building pretty late. Um, they just need to get used to playing with each other. But Wickham, um, I, I think we've said this about every nearly every Wickham sort of performance that we have done. They're winning in Gareth Ainsworth style fashion, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and Matt Bloomfield is here. They've been this really progressive coach and saying, you know, we're going to play out from the back. We're going to start playing through the thirds. We're going to play the ball on the ground. And the only time they've picked up any points is when they've hoofed it and got and got away with one. So um, I think Bloomfield's got a little bit more work to do in terms of, you know, integrating that philosophy into the club. He brought the players in to do it. But at the moment, they just need, they're just they doing what it takes to get results. And you know what? Fair play to Wickham. Um, they're, they're a decent side. And uh, I'm sure Bloomfield will be looking and aiming towards the top six this year. And same for you. Oh, thanks, Dylan, appreciate that. Love you. Uh, this is a recommendation of Tom. So if it doesn't work, it's Tom's fault. And if it does work... You've got to well, tell them about we... the meltdown you had, Ben, before... Oh, yeah. Well, 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 we had a bit of a meltdown. So before we got warning, we did have a bit of a meltdown over this microphone. It wasn't quite working, and it turns out that I had it on mute. So <laughs> that, that, oh, I'm not good with technology. Um, Gareth... Our friend from Port Vale, we will answer this. We have done Port Vale. If you want to re-watch that, I'll put time code in as soon as we finish the stream. Uh, but we will come to that in the end. We're going to come on to Fleetwood now for the next four, three, four, five minutes or so. But before we do the show, hello, Jack. How are oh, you doing, I'm not... mate? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Did, did, did you enjoy your weekend? Oh, mate. It was a, it was <laughs> a, yeah, ser it was a serious weekend. Um. <laughs> No, it was a, it was really really good, and and the, and the football was a a big part of that. It was a big part of that. We uh, we did well. We 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 beat a Fleetwood side that, let's be honest, aren't playing some of the best football right now. But we had to beat what's in front of us, and um, yeah, we we did. We approached the game in the way I'd want to really, and, and that score as quickly as we can because if we didn't score quickly, uh, that game could have got got quite messy. That absolutely reeked of us losing that game one 0 I said it to you Nappers before in the, the preview that we did. That game stunk of us drawing or, or losing that yeah. game because they've got a new manager because you're bottom of the league you haven't won a game yet they just it had every 
ounce of frustration before going into it. So to, to go to go and do what we wanted to do, and that's get the first goal, force you try and react, force you to try and come at us ultimately. And, and you know, right now you haven't quite got that ability to <laughs> to do it, but I, I'm sure. I'm guess I said I'm sure you'll be okay. I don't know if you're going to be okay. You, you need some improvement. Let's be honest. So just before I come and say my piece, these were the three goals that from my video yesterday. Go and check it out if you haven't already. Got to get a little plug in there, ladies and gentlemen. These were the three goals you can see on your screen now. Bang number one. What a strike! Can I just say this was number two. Really scrappy defending. And it comes to a loose man two nil, and that's the difference. And then. Edwards, what a strike, in my opinion, goal of the day. And like I say, for me, that is the difference that Oxford United haven't had. Now, I'll be honest with you. Um, I put a lot of energy and a lot of positive thoughts and I kind of try and be be that on my videos to make the best content I can possibly. I'll, I'll be honest, away at Charlton, I looked back at my video and I thought the intro straight away set the tone for the video and I was very negative going in there and Scott Brown got sat the next day. I think that's a everything about the game, really. And yesterday, I was up for it. I really was, and I felt positive. And just, by the way, I'll just quickly get my phone out. Now, Wardy and I had a chat this morning. I thought, we're going to win today. We're going to win today. And accidentally, I thought, drinking Wardy's tears up the cards. That was ready to be posted at five o'clock if we won or drew against you. And it turns out Oxford United beat us by three goals to nil. I mean, at the bottom of the league, below a team that haven't scored a goal yet this season in Sky. But League One, I'll be honest with you, I have felt down in a lot of games I've watched Fleetwood. Yes, it was the worst I've ever felt after a game of football. And we've lost playoffs against Wickham and Bradford in semi-finals. Obviously, obviously Wickham, Oxford were in those playoffs um, as well. Beat Portsmouth, didn't they? Um, that was the worst yeah, I did. felt. That was the worst I have ever felt. And I was kind of thinking. I, th I thought, never mind about Fleetwood. This channel is a League One channel, and it kind of revolves around Fleetwood staying in League One. Well, it kind of looks like the channel could be. I, I think it's the optimism, though, isn't it? Now, but that's what killed you. Is it's that optimism of like this is this is the the turning point, right? When you yeah. like I said to you, you you rolled the new manager dice, and you can't really roll it. I mean, teams do, but you can't really roll it too many times that is the ultimate dice roll want to change a season changing your manager is a very very big one and that, and that's one of the ones that can have a, a massive impact and when that doesn't work when you aren't playing very well when you're not getting the points and then you've already sort of rolled that dice and let's be honest i don't if that was an improvement on what we've seen so far i dread to think what you look like before when you know when you had scott brown and you've just mentioned that was there a lot of difference between a scott brown and a lee johnson performance in in a week no, but also it's a week and we will highlight that at the same time you sort of thought there might be that extra five percent yeah i don't know but you you went one nil down and it almost looked as though those players sort of just accepted it it was like you know we're one nil down here are we going to score or we're we just going to try and... and then you had the ball and be really passive with it you didn't really do anything with it and you kept saying before and i always remember this this famous 20 23 24 nappers quote and that is we've got to do the right things at the right times and right now and when when I was watching the game, funnily enough, I was always thinking about that. And I was yeah. always thinking about, are they doing the right thing at the right time? And when you're in possession in the, in the middle, and when you really could have, you know, teams that were, let's be honest, a little bit more expressive, they could have taken the game. So what's that first 20 minutes? You, you really could have got us because it's the first 20 minutes. I think we sort of just were a little bit, I don't know, complacent, a little bit edgy. But then that first goal killed it. But I don't know what it was. Is, is it care? You don't, you'd like to not think so a new manager. You dread to think that's the case if it's a new manager. But yeah, it's it's a strange, strange perspective from your eyes, I imagine. For us, obviously, it's, it's a good result. Oxford were fantastic and they did do the right things at the right time. I also say doing that we do the wrong things at the wrong time. You can do wrong yeah. things, you can make a mistake, but you can't make mm. it on your own penalty box. That second goal was tedious to give away. It's a great finish. You shouldn't be giving it away. You shouldn't be giving Edwards that much space. Jake, what's your thoughts on Fleetwood? Um, again, you've been saying about Fleetwood for a long, long time. You've not thought they've been, been good enough in games. One thing I will highlight to you in every game Fleetwood have played so far, I keep saying fine margins. I'm not going to keep banging on. I sound like a broken record and you can probably play Ben Natman bingo, what I say about the Fleetwood game every game. Oh, the chuffing not good them, are they? And it's chuffing fantastic when they do something fantastic. It's a team that is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought of an idea. 
get your Patreon money out. Uh, yeah, talking guys. of money, Dylan, our mate, oh, yeah. has given us a donation. Dylan, thank you so much, mate. Appreciate that. Stupid um, comment, though, isn't it? Just it is a stupid comment, you know. Like what this? He's rattled, mate. I've never met someone so rattled in my life. Two have every wardy tier, mate. How many points you got? You know what I mean? <laughs> Sit down, mate. Sit down. Get back they in your pompy the- box, mate. They are the views of the Jack Wall Football Podcast, not those of Cod Box. Anyway, so Jake, what in every game so far, Port Cambridge away, sorry, Carlisle, we draw the game. Cambridge at 1 0, foot to the better side. Cambridge score a second goal. Um, then we go away at Bolton. We have big chances. Don't take them. Bolton demolish us. Fair play to them. Derby beat the bar. They score, beat the post, 1 0. Um, then we play shoes behind Robertson slips. They go 3 1 on 1. They score that. They don't score that. Lynch doesn't get sent off. Earl doesn't get sent off. We might get back into the game. Charlton away. We give away a soft penalty against Scott Brown. Gets sacked yesterday. Two screamers. That happens. It is small margin with Fleetwood, but it, it is negative because Fleetwood aren't creating many chances. The back four are out. Promise on my Sherry's out. Keen Hayes is out. It's, it's worrying for the Cod Army. Yeah, I, I think so. But also, I think you have to, to note that. Fleetwood are actually making chances and you actually are sometimes, sometimes, I say sometimes because yesterday yesterday you weren't, in games. Um, you know, you look at Charlton, you look at Derby, you look at Shrewsbury, um, Cambridge, like you mentioned. Fleetwood are making, if, if Fleetwood were not making any opportunities and getting beat like you are, I'd be slightly worried. But because you're actually making opportunities, you know what, Fleetwood season won't be judged against no. Oxford. I said this for Burton earlier. Won't be judged for playing Oxford. It will be judged for playing Cheltenham and Shrewsbury and teams down the bottom. So, if you had made chances yesterday, I think that would have been a bonus because you played such a good side um, without inflating Wardy's ego too much. Uh, he's had a good weekend by the looks of it. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's I, I think you need to take the positive. And obviously, like Wardy mentioned, J- Johnson's only been in the, in, in the building a week. Um, you got to give him time to implement the philosophy. You know, sometimes it can take weeks and months for that to, to properly kick in. You know, we were just talking about Matt Bloomfield has not really been able to do it, but Wickham have somehow started strongly. So um, I, I think there are positive signs. I think once you get the first result, yes. I think two or three might follow suit very quickly. I, I agree yeah. with you there. And again, great result for Oxford. We'll come back to Oxford later on. Jack Ward will stay with us till the end. And then we're off to record uh, that Lee One podcast, which I am hosting as well. So hopefully uh, it's a good show. It, it won't be. Uh, it, it, it's us three lads, isn't it? We'll come to the League One table uh, as well. We've got some games we'll talk about in the, in the latter stages as well. This is currently the top 12. Oh, Exeter nice, City, Port Vale, Oxford, Stevenage, Barnsley and Portsmouth. Now, Barnsley, obviously, you would expect Barnsley to finish fourth last season, so only the, the one place below, obviously, with a game in hand on, on the Borough. Um, Portsmouth, you'd expect to be a little bit higher, but, you know, it's not lost a game yet. That's what they keep telling themselves as false hope at the moment, I think, Dylan, eh? Um, no, no, I'm, no, they're doing well. They're doing well, Next aren't week. they? Um, Stevenage fourth in the league table. This should be on 19 points. Let's be honest about that. Oxford United, 15 points. That's a really good stop. The two defeats. To Cambridge and Carlisle, two sides you'd probably be, be expecting to win. You've won it away at Barnsley and Derby. Exit the top of the league and deservedly so. What does two points a game get you, Jake? What do we always say on this channel? Um, promote it, right, I guess. Yeah, bar last season, obviously. It didn't work last season, did it? Um, yeah. Bolton Wanderers, Wickham, Lincoln, Cambridge, Derby and Peterborough all drop out. Jack, bar maybe a Port Vale and Exeter, what, 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 what are you kind of your surprises and kind of what are you looking into for the next six games or what you see changing masterfully? Have you seen anything where teams maybe could go back into the or go into the top six or anything that made, made you feel like they're, they're just pulling off results and not really playing well right now? I think you put a brilliant tweet out the other day. I think it was yesterday, actually, when you spoke about that four and you broke down the four and where they were last season. There's been such an improvement. I think when you look at teams that have integrated new players really quickly, either been very good at recruitment and been able to bring in players they know are going to hit the ground running because that isn't always easy. I think I was watching the show earlier and you mentioned Burton and Jake made a really good point to talk about Burton have brought in a lot of players, but are those players going to be able to just sort of get going all at once and start firing those results quickly? And as we've seen, it's a little bit slow, um, but I, I'm staying with Burton. I think they are a team, as you mentioned just a second ago, they are a team that I think will come good. I think they will click because they've got enough League One proven players in there. 
play uh, teams like Pompey and, you know, Dylan's in here crying his eyes out. But I, I think I think Pompey are in a position where they are clicking. They have got an identity and they have come good. And I said to Tom on the phone a minute ago, you've got to let teams breathe a little bit. I think sometimes we can make a big mistake of looking at what, looking at a very, very small, I mean, it's recency bias, isn't it, really? You look at a very, very small section of the season and you go, what's not working? Now, it's going to backfire on me with Derby. I've got a horrible feeling. I think I've been very, very open about Derby. I think that Paul Warren is a specialist and he will get Derby out of the mess. But maybe that that's an example where you've got to be a little bit more reactionary and maybe you've got to not let a side breathe as much. So you, you're never going to predict it. Port Vale have been fantastic. I got someone say about Port Vale not being mentioned on the roundup as much this week because it's their highest position in 20 years or something. I do apologise for that. But I think when you look at how good Port Vale have been, it's almost a compliment that we don't have to say that every single week. Yeah. You're doing well. You, you're, a, you're, a, you're a team in League One that are, are putting up some serious trees. So... I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that, Port Vale fans. You certainly get the credit because you're doing a fantastic job. And again, at Napa, you quoted it earlier about how many times you're going to mention losing seven on the opening day and coming back, um, you know, coming back and, and doing well. Um, I think it's a really, really good point. You look at what, how they have reacted. As much as people don't like saying that comment anymore, it's a little bit old, but it is true. It is, it is true that you, they, they have reacted fantastically well. Barnsley, I've got a little bit of stick about Barnsley. They might, I, I, I thought Barnsley just miss out. I'm backing Peter. I think there's a bit of a mini league table, sort of Peterborough versus Barnsley sort of in my head. Yes. I, I edged Peterborough, but it turns out Barnsley might be, might nick it. There's some of these sort of teams that I'm a little bit against right now or, or, or for and against. So we'll have to wait and see, mate. It's still very, very early. We forget and we laugh and we joke and we'll come and see you up in a minute and I'm going to, I'm going to be extremely excited again for another round. I can't wait for it. But we've also got to understand this is this is seven games. And um, extra as well. I don't want to rub something in the wound, but extra are top. They have played one game more. You know, Pompey and Barnsley play on Tuesday night with, with two other games. So okay. it, 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 there's a lot of a lot of factors that can change it. But I tell you what, it's very, very open League One. And we we always go into League One season, don't we? We go into seasons and sort of just go, this one's going to be a good campaign. This is going to be fun. Um, this one is going to be fun. You can tell straight away there's going to be sides going for this. Absolutely. We will uh, bring Jake back in. I just wanted to give his voice a little bit of a, of a break after an hour and 57 minutes of talking. The bottom half, there we are. I'll stick for this week on the bottom. Uh, I will face it. Bristol Rovers move to 13th. Blackpool down to 14th. Only two defeats in nine, but pressure already on Neil Critchley's men. Shrewsbury dropped to 15th after the fourth defeat of the season. Back to back 2-0 defeats away at Carlisle. And now... Uh, at home to Bristol Rovers. Leighton Orient, eight points from eight. A good start after a disappointing start, some could say. Uh, obviously, defeating there to Stevenage and Portsmouth at home and three conceded away at Wickham. But what's followed is a point away at Bloomfield Road and a really, really uh, good run of late. Oh, beating Exeter, who are currently top of the table last weekend as well. And another good point on the road um, yesterday. Charlton 17th, Michael Appleton has gone in there. And Charlton have picked up four points from the last two. Carlisle, eight, uh, sorry, seven points from uh, from the eight games as well, picking up two draws um, in the last few games. Owen Mox and two goals to assist to his name this season as well. Northampton, they've lost four games, but all by that one goal um, situation. Wigan are meant to be on 13 points, which uh, would be in and around that playoff mix as well. Reading have had four points deducted as well, will be flying around that 13 uh, position. has won three out of the four home games. Burton, Albion, Cheltenham and Fleetwood make up the bottom three. Fleetwood do play Cheltenham, Burton and Leighton Orient all coming up as well. Uh, the El Crapicos are back in Skybet League One. Jake, we have this chat a lot. What are your thoughts? Is there anyone jumping out of you? I think Reading is the obvious answer, isn't it? That's going to get out of this mess in the short-term future. If you had to predict a bottom four right now, would the bottom three be in it and maybe you're replacing Carlisle or or maybe a Northampton uh, in change of Reading? No. Burton wouldn't be in my bottom, three, my bottom four at all. Um, okay. I, I think, you know, Wally said it there, and I think I said it at the top of the show, I think Burton are far too good. I think they'll eventually come good. Fleetwood, unfortunately, Ben... Um, just looking at the column, mate. Six defeats and seven. It it reads everything you yeah, need. There's to lack know. of evidence, is it? There's no there's no evidence that you're going to turn it around. I think with Burton, exactly. Got a squad and, there and, that and, chance. and Cheltenham are the same because you know the, the the goals just aren't coming for Cheltenham. So you'd say those teams are, are, are pretty much not gone, but in terms of giving a bottom four at this point of the season, you'd say they're probably done. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Shrews be dropping there. They've had a really poor four weeks. They've been pretty much appalling in, in, in all of the last couple of games. 
And you know what? <sighs> Difficult. Northampton have not uh, have sort of struggled in the last couple of weeks as well. They've they've had a good, good couple of results. They beat Porsche. They, they they beat Cheltenham. But as soon as they come up against anyone half decent, they they, they tend to crumble a little bit. So I'm I'm going to say the Cobblers might just slip into it just. Absolutely. And uh, again, get your questions in the comment section uh, below as well for the last five minutes. And also ask some questions to Wardy, our very special guest. Wardy will hopefully be coming on to one of our, our live streams where Jake gets a bit of a break in the midweek. He's a bit like um, oh, yeah. Jeff Stelling, yeah. isn't he, off uh, Collect Soccer Saturday a few years ago. He could, he could do Saturday Tuesday a few years ago. He's getting a bit older now. He's right. Kind of, Steady he's got on. Give, he's, we've got to give him a break in the midweek. So um, we are getting four and written all over it and we will be getting Wardy. We shouldn't have said that. We've we just put off the entire audience. We're getting Tom, we're getting, yeah. we're getting Jack, audience welcome. I'll tell you what, it'll, it'll be 100% ladies watching. What can we say? Um, and anyway, so get your comments in. I did go to the tram again. I just decided not to vlog it as well. I am going to every single game this season. If I get sepsis, if I get COVID, if I get anything, if I break a leg, if I... If I'm on a ventilator, I'll be at every single game this season. I, I'm not having that affect me again this season. Um, again, um, how you guys keep going yeah. with the distractions? Obviously, you want just to talk about Port Vale before, and I think now's the perfect opportunity. Wardy didn't do it before, so you can't shirk it now. Port Vale, I think, kind of, I said it before, and I don't want to keep repeating myself. They've got a solid squad. They don't concede goals other than the opening day. Forget that. They've won five out of six and drew away at Bloomfield Road. They had a goal disallowed at Blackpool. They should have won the game. They were the better side. But by, by, by some distance, let's be honest, they wouldn't have gone on this run if they wouldn't have lost that scoreline on the opening day, in my opinion. It's just brought them together. Andy Crosby has just motivated the troops in a tricky group, set of fixtures. Carlisle, Northampton at home are difficult fixtures because hard to break down. You found that, Wardy. Jake found that yesterday. We found it. With three, we, we've, played, we've all played them. Um, and then you, you look at, they've been to Charlton, they've been to Blackpool, um, they beat Reading at home as well. And They've never really looked back and they've got a solid squad. I really like uh, Alfie Devine. I think he's excellent. And Ben Garrity as well. He's a good player. James Wilson, good player. They've got a number of good players. They started well last season, but something feels a little bit different this year. I don't mind. Whoever, whoever wants to answer that question. Go on, go, on, go on, Wardy. You, you go first and then Jake. I thought Sorry, you could I, I, compl I, compl I completely missed your question. I was, I was yeah, convinced I, I, Jake was going to answer it. Yeah, I'll, Jonathan, I'll, I'll be telling you, if you, I didn't hear a word you just said. I completely zoned out. <laughs> no, Port Vale are good at football. Like yeah, Port Vale are good at football. Port, Port Vale were, were very, very good when, when we last saw them as well. Um, and I, I think, I say very, very good. They were very, very good at what they needed to do. And, and that's and that's really important to say. They got the right... Do you know what happens? I'll say it again. They did the right things at the right time. They did the right thing at the right time when they were... They needed to sort of pounce on us when our discipline went out the window. Harris did something stupid and we went down to 10 men for half an hour. They were very, very good at frustrating Oxford, being very, very good in that low block. I thought they were fantastic at being difficult to beat. And in the end, they were very difficult to beat because they beat us. So they were in a, they were, they were doing well. They were, they were doing well and they, they continue to do well as well. Um, I was always a little, uh, with Port Vale, they're one of those sides where they start really, really well. Are they going to continue it? Is it really a hot streak or are they going to just carry on, carry on pushing? Um, but, but right now, all the evidence does suggest they're going to carry on. They're in a really, really good place and, and they're doing the right things and, and they're being very, very difficult to break down. And they'll nick, because of that, they're going to nick games because they've got that sort of clinical edge as well. Absolutely. We'll, we'll keep, keep with you and we will bring, bring Jake in in a minute as well. Question for Jack. Mm. We'll finish higher. Port Vale or Oxford? It's, tough. It's, it's, it's that same question about who. Uh, it's, the question is, is Port, are Port Vale going to continue on this hot streak or Oxford going to continue on this hot streak? Because they're both in, in a really good place. Um, Right now, you're Oxford. throwing under the bus here, Ben. Oxford. Yeah, it, it probably, it, I don't know what is going on above me right now. It sounds like someone's trying to break into my flat. But what I can tell you <laughs> is I think it's going to be, I'll say Oxford. Yeah, uh, I, sorry to I actually meant Port Vale when I was on about that. I remember a few years ago, you were, I think I was talking to Ward about the other day, you had 16 points after 16 games, you ended on over 80. So I am fully aware that I, I was meaning Port Vale. So, so sorry if there's any confusion there. Who do you think will be a good fit for Cheltenham if Elliot goes? I wonder who he's going to suggest. Is it Matt Gray from Sutton by any chance? No, it's Luke Garrard from. Um... From wow. Bournemouth, Wood, actually. Wow. Or you go for Andy Woodman at Bromley. Just got, um, you know, just beat Oldham 3 and David Un Unsworth had just been sacked, actually. So I would go and get a manager out of non league if I were Chelsea. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm worried that Regan Paul might get a yellow card for Tuesday, which means he'll be suspended for Saturday. Jake will be happy if that happens. <laughs> He's trying to process that information, I think. Um, That's yeah. massive news, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I, I, I'd be all for it, mate. He's getting booed anyway, so who cares? Absolutely. Do you, do you reckon you will boo him? Or you, maybe not you personally? I, do you reckon, do you I, Lincoln? Yeah, I, I, I think Lincoln fans will boo him, yeah. Absolutely. Really? Uh, but I don't think he should be booed. Is he, very, he, did, he did promise a championship move and then ended up at yeah, he, he did. Ooh, he did. Well, it's not going to go that like, very well, is it? He, he was our best player for the last two years, admittedly. So I, I don't think you can boo anyone that does that well for your club. I do think, obviously, before we do wrap up these, you know, the next few questions um, below as well. Um, yeah, I, th I do think this... Conor McGrandall's promised a Southern move, didn't he? So, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, sorry, yeah. I went to, sorry, Northern move, I went to Charlton. Um, yeah. Anyway, Jake, Barnsley, yeah. Portsmouth, where do you see that one going? Big game on Tuesday night. Probably one of the biggest games in League One so far this season. Yeah, Um Oh, I just said it in a stream full of Pompey fans. I think Barnsley are going to win 2-1. So, I'm, uh, I still think Barnsley will... Uh, at home, Barnsley are very strong. Um, Devante Coles off the back of scoring a, a brace. Um, Pompey went to Oakwell last year and got beat 3-1, I seem to remember. They've not won at Oakwell in 22, year, 22 years, I'm informed by by Barney. So, um, I... Yeah, I, I don't know. Pompey are a good side. I'm not saying Pompey are not a good side, but I, I think a lot of teams are going to struggle at, at Oakwell this year. And one of them was not Oxford, as Wardy keeps telling us. But um, yeah, I, I, I think I think Barnsley will, 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 will do Pompey 2-1. Absolutely. And Wardy, some, a big game on Tuesday night. Peter for Cheltenham. Peter need to get on course for three points. I think Wardy's a bit confused that there's, a two, there's three games on yeah, Tuesday night. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. know. Yeah, um, again, if you don't know Wardy, Wardy's a very prepared man. That mm, you know, I didn't, even know, I didn't even know those games yesterday. I thought it was international <laughs> break again. <laughs> he, he got a message at 10, 10 past three going, oh, I, saw, I saw team news and then I thought, but yeah, it must be a game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what? I'm, I'm, I'm on the bench, I miss the coach. Uh, um, I know. Peter Cheltenham, I think this is an ideal chance for people to go and get something, but Cheltenham, it's a free hit for them. It is. It is a free hit. I'd be interested to see if Wade Elliott's going to still be in charge of that game. By the way, mm. that'd be uh, that'd be something. Um, are they going to get the the no manager bounce? The new man. I mean, they probably won't get a new manager in that time. Let's see what they get. They might still have Wade Elliott. They might still be fighting for it. There was a moment last season, wasn't there, when Elliott was sort of convinced he was going to get sacked, or maybe he didn't, but everyone else did, and he sort of turned it around. So um, maybe we're going to see, you know, Cheltenham sort of save their or Wade Elliott really sort of save their. Their, their season at this point. We'll have to wait and see. I, I, it's tough though. But like you say, I, I've been back in posture a while. I think they've got a really, really good young squad. They kept out of Clark Carras, they kept out of Edwards. They did. A, they had in the end. I think you reflect on their window fairly positively, don't you? So, yeah, I, I think. Let's be honest. I think Peterborough will probably win that game. Cheltenham to score a goal first before they need to worry about winning games. That's going to be their first challenge. Absolutely, as well. And uh, last couple of questions um, as well. Uh, result for Port Vale. They played Burton on Tuesday, Jake. A, an interesting game there. Port Vale could go on to 19 points, carry on that run. But Burton have to get something soon. <laughs> Play Fleetwood next week. There you are, lads. Got your boots. Um, if we lose next week, right, I'm done. I'm done. Like, end of. Um, what, what are you thinking? I, I think this has got kind of a 1-1, one, one, which would... would It'd be, it says a lot when this would be a disappointing result for Port Vale if he drew this game of football. It'd feel like a missed opportunity. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I disagree. I, I think I'm with you. I think it'll be a draw, probably. Um, but I I, I think it, Port Vale would just be happy to keep the momentum going and just keep ticking along points because you know they get they get an extra point, Burton get a point to 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 widen the gap to bottom of the table. Fleetwood, I think they'd be happy with it. By the way, I, I've been thinking about my channel and the T Lob all oh, for the last for, uh, last 24, 48 hours. So mm. there is ideas coming. The channel will not be dead, and hopefully T Lop will not be. We might have to change the name, but I'm kind of thinking more fleet with the new you boys going up at the moment. So um, <laughs> as well, yeah, Jake, where can they go and find your channel, mate? It is coming back. I don't know it's <laughs> death. It's, it's, uh... it, where what? Well, it's uh, it's six feet under at the minute, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's not scores and bloody doors, mate. You can't miss that series. Yeah. Channel seventy two. I mean, I've not uploaded for for some time. Um, circumstances that the boys will find out uh, once we finish recording will uh, dictate. But yeah, forgot the Google. Over... Forgot the Google password. That's yeah. That's, that's yeah, I'm locked out of the account. Uh, yeah, channel seventy two. If you don't mind. 
and Wardy produces some yeah. fantastic content. I'll be going to watch uh, his video later on. Not like that, you dirty boys. But, uh, <laughs> but um, again, he produces some very good Lee One um, analytical videos. And can I just say, by the way, for a man who, whose videos are really good, <laughs> so knowledgeable, <laughs> stat based, really, honestly, you, you paid to get this on TV, Sky Sports. He's clueless. He's absolutely. <laughs> he doesn't know a thing about what's going. On. He doesn't even know what auction are playing. But he, no. He, he, when it comes to those twenty minutes, he, he's good for yeah. twenty minutes. Is Ward? And, well, that's uh, what you know. That's what they say. You know, good twenty minute spell. But um, no, I I did know there were some games. Uh, didn't know who was playing, but I knew there were some games on Tuesday night. But no, you yeah. Thanks, thanks for that, Bernie. But you now you now ruined. Now everyone's going to think that you know that I only. I actually I think I could tell you who we've got next week. Um. We've got Exeter next week. Big game, first versus third. So, no, but no, yes, I uh, appreciate that. Nappers, thank you for having me on, mate. I'm saying goodbye, but I'll probably see you in about five minutes' time to record T-Lot, which is really exciting. Uh, thank you, everybody, for... I think it's my it's my first time on a live Cods yes, Pods. I think it might it be. Is, it is, it, it, we'll, we'll be getting him back. We we got Jake, and we couldn't yeah. get rid of him. and we, we, We've had him for nearly two That's years. Right. But... So um, mm, we, we love it, really. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for watching today's live stream. It is uh, massively uh, appreciated as well. Please like, please subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, we are getting close to that big 12,000 subscribers. Go and support the boys. Um, Channel 72 there. He doesn't have a clue what's going on. Hello, Jay. You all right, mate? <laughs> and the Jack Ward Football Oops. Podcast as well. And um, Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, again, another... Well, we say our, but we always go over, don't we? It's League One. Teal-up time, baby. And uh, if you want to go and follow that League One podcast, it's available um, via Twitter and Spotify and iTunes, all that jazz as well. And Wardy is our uh, head of admin over there as well. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later. I'll end with a closing screen as we always do. And again, a big over and out. Drive safely. Up the cards. <laughs>